Mm-hmm. Fuck cleaning it. <laughs> How the fuck are you? It's Brad here. Uh, I'm sorry it's been so long um, that I haven't created a tutorial for quite a long time. Uh, I'm just finishing off my barbie, which I, I'm just eating the um, vegetable component of my meal because you always got to eat your greens. <laughs> Let me get that fucker out of there. This one here. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. It's fucking um broccoli. It's like a fucking mandel bulb fractal. In my hand. Made for fucking it. So Freedom of speech, right? I support that shit. That doesn't mean I support. I mean, come on. Grow a brain, you fucking cunt. <laughs> if you think because I say I support freedom of speech that I support anything anyone says, grow a fucking brain. <laughs> See this... Fucking lactose free. Fuck that. What a piece of shit. It tastes like... I don't know what the fuck it tastes like, this shit. Seriously. Why am I drinking this? I shouldn't have bought fucking lactose free. What the fuck? I'm not even lactose intolerant. But I'm fuckwit intolerant. <laughs> Alright. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, oh, fuck. I fucking just bought this phone and I'm going to smash another phone. Anyway, um, oh, first I'd just like to show you my latest fashion innovation. It's, um, hang on. It's got to be higher. There. That's my latest fashion innovation. Um, and it's it's the sort of short shorts coming back, showing the legs, you know, spider legs. And Bill Hackey, I already got a Sheila, you cock spank. I don't need a dress to impress. She's already well impressed. All right, let's see here. All right, there's the gear. All right, it's all set up, my tutorial machine. It's got everything. It's got fucking... Green screen, a blue green screen. It's got a uh, audio recording of the this the uh, the mix, really high quality. It's got fucking ribbon mic, which gets independently recorded into this little device, which externally records my HDMI uh, my screen through HDMI pass through. Then I got. My little depot screen up here, I call it, where I can view stuff off stage. And I've got this knife, right, because I've always got knives around, right? This one's to chop my fucking head off before I start the tutorial. You want to play some basketball. Fast-paced and action-packed. Basketball is one of the most popular sports in the world. To play and to watch.
the object to get the ball in the basket. Some of the skills you'll need include dribbling, blocking, passing, and, oh yes, shooting. Being well, there you go. In Carter 95 basketball, I could swear that music was made five years earlier. Okay, fuck. Fuck, I love that music. Uh, my tutorial machine. Oh, look, my desktop. Mm. Ooh, coming to... Coming soon to the patch bay near you. Right, let's get started. I'm not going to talk like that the whole time like my other tutorial, obviously. Um, well, what, did, what was I doing? I was doing this or this. This one had a bit nicer. A bit nicer. Okay. So on the poll in Synthway Secrets, it said... Um, 90 something whatever wants me to deconstruct a tune well i don't have any fully complete tunes and thankfully i don't yeah don't use that anymore piece of shit fuck it up don't you, oh, i replace that now yeah so uh thankfully i can just deconstruct the work in progress which is just a, a loop but it's a sophisticated loop and we can just talk about what's going on in the tune. Oh, I was I was analysing it with Wave Candy at last night. Hang on, let me see what I get rid of. Wave Candy, pretty cool. Uh, right, zero dB controller. Let's just uh, okay. Right, I should have been prepared. Yeah, I am prepared. Okay, I don't need to see that. Okay, so fuck. Let's see here. Uh, just gonna enable uh, the power stab. I call it, I'll call it that. It's not an ore kit, but it's a, it's a power stab, like a brass kind of stab. Let's have a listen to what we got here. What, 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 let's have a listen to what, 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 do we, what do we have here. Oops. Had this disabled for my basketball. Okay, let's go. Okay, that's very neat and clean, isn't it? It has a pitch bend there, and very short. And right. Let's see what the whole song sounds like. Whole song. My friend said to me, "It's not a song. Songs have singing in it." Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I mean, it's. Uh, the, I mean, track. Sorry, I mean, I've used the wrong word there. It's not a song. Okay, fine. Let's hear it without the uh, sequence. Let's hear it with only the bass line. Uh, it's not mastered, of course, and it's also got a bit of more mixing to go in that, right? But it's, it's only sort of, let's see, this probably would have taken a few hours, this little bit. Uh, and of course, I would spend, again, always I have to say this with my tutorials, that if I ever construct something in front of your very eyes, 
I'm doing it as quick as possible, obviously. I mean, you're hardly going to watch a fucking two-day tutorial of the same song repeating. You're not going to fucking watch that, are you? Me refining this bass line for eight hours or five hours or who knows how long I spent on this bass line to, to make it what I want. All right. I'll go to, I'll walk a million miles for one of your smiles. One of my own smiles. Check this out. The drums. The drums with the claps. Notice how the drums are very effing simple. Like, does it, drums don't always have to be um, syncopated. This is a, temp, a simple two-step drums. It's almost like fucking a waltz from World War Two marching band. Okay, that was unnecessary. Sorry, no, that was racist. That, that was making a reference to, to marching bands of the Third Reich. <laughs> I'm offended! Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're offended? Okay, okay. Bye-bye. Okay, so uh, let, let's just hear the, the claps. Wow. So there's two cl two dry claps and one, one big fat wet clap. Interesting. Right, let's hear it once again, the whole thing. And mind you, when I'm making music, I don't move my head at all. Um, no offense to anyone who does that when they're making music. But I actually saw um, Action Jackson on his live thing. And he was like bopping along as he's making it. Um, which I found really interesting. It's like, was the, I'm just saying this out to you, Action Jackson. Were you doing that for the viewers or do you literally do this like... Uh, leave a comment when you're making music do you bop along to the music and that I, 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 I tend to stay static because I don't remember that my body exists but uh, okay so let's get on let's get into it where should we start oh oh oops it's not interactive all right well we'll start with uh, the the stab I'll call it a stab I don't care. I call shit my own thing because I actually, you know, I worked everything out myself 99%. Uh, so I make up names for shit, which aren't maybe the real names of shit. Um, so if you're here to learn terminology of synthwave, uh, maybe not, not the right tutorial for you. Uh, maybe you need to go uh, and, and read a book about synth wave or some shit about music or what power stab i call it let's see what is going on with that power stab then power stab is patcha and it's running through patcha so patcha is really awesome and i need to say to you that um look that's a bit off is that still off okay you know how when you have pitch bends and you press stop in the middle of a pitch band, it's going to leave it in the wrong place, which can sometimes cause anomalies. That's a little tip there and that you'll think. Then when it's like if it's in the middle of this pitch band and it's here, uh, it will start here probably. Unless in this program, if you initiate song with this position, with, with not this position, but initiate song with this position, it's probably okay then. Anyway. Node-based signal, node-based effects chaining, I believe, is the future. Now, I've been doing heaps of that. I don't always do it. If it's a simple thing, I don't do it. But the complex things you can do with node-based chaining and the, just the in, intuitive intuitiveness of it, uh, look, parallel... So we got a situation here where there's a parallel processing, dry and wet going on there. We've got a situation here where there's one instrument that's dexed, another's M1. 
and M1 is going through Qatar rig to get something done. And then they're both heading off into denoiser. Uh, and then that, like I said, that denoiser is going dry to this, I'll call it a node. I use fruity balance as a node. Fruity balance has balance and gain. Uh, and it also has this handy dandy. I don't say handy dandy. I do now. Dan dandy handy dial. So it's showing you fucking, you know, the DBs, uh, and um, which is good. I mean, if it's going over here, one of these gains is too high on one of these things. So you want it to be in a reasonable area, and you want it to be have in a reasonable area if you've got other stuff planned that's going to add gain and so on. So, right? So it's hitting this node. Then from the node, it's splitting off in two directions for two different in this case, three different forms of processing. Uh, it goes up here, gets something done there, gets a tell chorus, and goes to the output from the input. The input is MIDI. So technically, these two are the inputs, because where it becomes yellow is audio, where it's green is MIDI input. So this, sends, this is sending the MIDI keyboard to both instruments at once. They're going through all this web. Then a, from this hub, it gets a Serum FX, which I believe has nothing in it, doesn't it? Come on, Serum FX. Oh, it has a delay. Oh, yeah, that's right. So then it does it splits into two. I'll explain now what it is. So let's just say we have a look at the instruments to start off with. That's We're hearing now only one of the instruments with the processing that you see here. It's Dext. It is a, a, it's an analog sounding synth pad with a few alterations. And in later, I actually end up later replacing this with DX7. I actually bring over this uh, patch to DX7, but that's another story and it's very complex the way that I'm now going to replace this with an uh, audio input signal from a DX7 doing the same thing. And, uh, yeah, yeah, very complex. But I, why do I do that? Because I like it. I feel good about it. It gets me hard. Okay, so I always use just DX as in place of, of what will later be DX7. Anyway, you got that doing this, right, with algorithm 2. And then I've got a similar thing going on here. They're both pretty, they're almost, it's funny that they're almost both sounding exactly the same, but they're not. This one's a stain, and it's, and it's an FM thing. This one is actually just a saw wave and a trumpet oscillator. If we listen to the trumpet oscillator, that solo, it, it sounds like, it's that. And we listen to the saw wave oscillator that's what getting most of your sound there um so yeah that just adds a bit of more i i i layered those two because i wanted sort of the lovely clarity of the m1 to shape those tight notes and then when it's sustained see over here when it sustains and it has the pitch bend i want it to be it would only be doing this by that point the FM. So this is responsible for the attack mainly. And then later on with the longer notes, you're hearing only this pitch bending because this has already done its trick at the beginning of that note right there. So what I, so what did I have here? I think it was a transient shaper, which I used to use this transient shaper from Guitar Rig, but uh, lately I've up I've changed to uh, Fruity Loop. I bought Fruity Loops um, Transient Shaper, Transient Processor, um, because I don't I don't want to have to load the entire guitar rig interface every time I simply want to use Transient Master. Even though you can buy Transient Master as a separate a separate VST from Native Instruments, and I do recommend it. It's fantastic. Uh, it doesn't allow for much other stuff except for this smooth and limit 
uh, limits up here anyway. But um, you transient shapers are fucking marvelous. You know what I mean? I just love them uh, because they're they're like a smart version of a compressor. It's like they they analyze the signal and determine where the attack is and where the sustain is with some sort of algorithmic um, processing that you can't see or adjust. Anyway, two knobs, it's very simple. Uh, if It's also a good thing to use if you're not confident with um, with the compressor, the complexity of the compressor. Um, so it's a good place to start. So you can also use it as your sort of um, beginner's compressor, if you like. Not to say that it can do all of the things a compressor can do. It can't. But it is fucking lovely for getting tight, shaped uh, drums, bass, anything, really. I use it heaps. But not not this. I use uh, something else. In fact, let's replace this. So um, where were we? We were here. That's this overkill CPU-wise. I'm going to just uh, add um, transient processor, which I'm very happy with. It's fantastic. So in, connected, out, connected. And I was just putting the release down heaps. But the, this one's different because it's cool because you got how subtle the processing is. This is really transparent sort of processing. Then you got this, which is like in between. And this is just hard, hard processing. So I'm going to go with this. Gonna, who knows, do that. Maybe I'll enhance that a bit. I don't think I'm good. So that goes there. Then I'm going to my denoiser. You don't have to do this because I'm just like a attention to detail psycho. Uh, if you want to be attention to detail psycho, it's up to you. And whether you want to compromise your CPU to do so, it's up to you. Um, I have a majorly different workflow. So what you're seeing here is only stage one of my workflow. Um, and I'll explain in later tutorials about how I end up breaking the song into multiple parts. So the stab itself would become its own project and it would get the full 100% dedicated to the stab and I'd break it all apart uh, and then I'd have a final uh, project which has all of those parts put in as WAV, uh, as WAV files, right? And then the stab one would have all these dummy WAV files of all the other instruments and the only real thing would be the stab and it would get the 100% anyway. I'll explain that later. And that's why I never care too much about CPU use except for in the first stage, I want it not to... I want to see it at like 89 or some shit. But then I'll realize at that point, it's it's time to start splitting. And by that point, I've got... And I also split in the, the intro of the song and the middle and the end and all this, but that's another story. So that's why I go to excessive detail. You don't have to, but you can learn from this though. Uh, no, now, the DX or DX7, or DEX, or any fucking, it seems, any option for FM except for uh, maybe FM8 and um, what else? Citrus, which is native to FL Studio. Uh, you, you got this crustiness on the high end, um, almost like it's aliasing, um, which I like, but I like to tame it a little bit. I don't want it too fucking... Or I like clarity still. So I tame it a little bit using a denoiser with these bands here and the 10K. And uh, I sh I'm, I, I'm going to say that's probably, uh, you know, 5K there or 6. I don't really fucking know. 1. It doesn't tell me. Whatever. You can't move it left, right anyway, right? So anyway, this just takes out a bit of the crunch. And it so happens that M1, which is clean as fuck, is still going into that. But I mean, it's not going to do much. It's going into that because I'm going to compensate for that any loss of high end with this maneuver here. So without this maneuver,
So what do we got here? Can you guess? Yep, that's correct. It's an exciter. It's from MDEX from Korg. MDEX from Korg is fucking awesome for effects. It's lovely effects. It's the kind of effects that you're going to see from similar kind of effects that you see within uh, M1 itself um, and and uh, also WaveStation. Uh, it's almost like it's been snapped off and here it is, but not quite, not quite. Uh, anyway, I've selected a basic side of strangely, but I've, I've, I've adapted it with using this point knob to make it appropriate. And without again, it's just flat without. Okay, so that goes parallel and then goes to here. There is no, there's actually a slight adjustment on, on the gain there to make up for this doubling up situation because it does double up here now. So I've, I've taken one and a half dB off at this point. And then splits off up here to another transient shaper, which I'm not going to replace this time with transient, the other transients. Oh, don't touch your face. Don't touch your face, Brad. Naughty bad. Okay. So it fully fucking kills your sustain even more. Again, along the chain, I'm going to be doing heaps of uh, transient shaping, as you can see. But once it does that, it's got this um, reflect little reflector, which is a convolution reverb. It sounds, and I'll show you what that does. It's very subtle. If I put it higher, you'll see what it's doing more clearly. It's doing a bit of that, but just only a bit. It's very fine adjustments. Like I said, I'm psycho on detail. And you got to be psycho on detail for two reasons. When you're sculpting the sound and when you're trying to make the sound as clear as possible. And just any reason, you've got to be like... The more psycho on detail you are, the better you are at making tunes. If you're just like, I like, I like to, I just drag in some snare and it's a kick and now I load up, I tell you no for my bass. And my bass goes, ding, 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 ding. And my snare goes, duk, tick, duk, tick, duk. And then... I, maybe I do singing on the top saying, I'm running in the night. Okay. Well, good good on you. Good. I mean, because the majority of human beings want simplicity stuff. Um, but uh, if you want to appeal to um, the masses, you don't need to be very smart. Um, but it helps. Okay, so well, what do we got here? Oh, you got... Uh, uh, tell chorus snapped off snapped off from tell you know uh, this i have to say is a lovely thing now the the reason why a lot of people really love tell you know is is because it sounds like such a genuine uh, emulation of the juno right but also um the the chorus is an emulation of juno chorus um and he's given it away for free, this thing. So go get that off the website, all right? Because that's valuable. If you slap that, you can slap that on, on Synth 1. You can slap that on your penis and get a big, wide penis. Uh, okay, that was rude. Are you offended? Oh, he said penis. He should, and he should have said vagina because the penis. Because half the population have a vagina and they, they, they would be stared on. Okay, you can shove this up your fucking vagina and your ass and slap it on your penis, just to be fair. And if you have a half penis, half vagina sort of thing, you can slap it on your pingina too. Okay? But make sure that you enjoy yourself. Okay, it goes that goes to here. And then we go to... Here, what do we got here? Well, so that's our dry signal. And now this becomes now our wet signal. 
and this becomes entirely our echo or delay see so this is the mix is full here so we're not getting any dry anymore on here our dry sorry our dry is here now what we're dealing with here is serum serum fx version when you buy serum you can go and get the fx version of their website they give for free as well which is basically just the whole fx section which like tell chorus is the fx split off from serum and put on anything you want anything you want right fucking legendary delay bit of feedback 32 16 this is your eq what part of it what what is the because we're fully mixed this will be the eq of the delay and it's bouncing left right speaker and it's bpm of course let's have a listen to just that by disabling this here we go so what we got is this creating the delay and then we're going to treat the delay in two ways see see like that so eat so um, what I could have done is been even more surgical and make this one the right part of the delay and this one the left part of the delay and treat the left part of the delay like so and the right part of the delay like so. But instead I didn't. I did double mono. That's double mono. Well, double stereo actually. So what it's doing here now is it's sending off the entire delay as you hear it into here through a couple of effects and then it's calling it left. It's pushing that whole thing to the left. And then this one is doing the same thing. And it's pushing the whole thing to the right. Well, I'm not happy with that on second thought. Now that I look at it, I'm going, no, nah, fuck that. So I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to isolate the left and right before I process them. And what I'm going to use is, fucking weird. I usually just type everything. Shaper, stereo shaper, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have two of them. Fuck, shaper. One, two, and I only want left here and I don't want right here okay so now this goes to there this goes to, to there and this is connected to my wrist I already did that joke okay so let's see the difference now cool now it's working properly because that's what I intended and I did it wrong so now the left side of the echo is 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 uh, having a short ambient reverb and a stereo chorus, and then it's making sure that this stereo processing is pushed back to the left as well. Because if it's not, it will be uh, no longer. Uh, this whole chain will no longer be completely left because as soon as you take this leftiness and process it with stereo processing you end up getting so if I disable that and play you still hear a little bit coming through to the right because no, you shouldn't what the fuck because of that fucking kidding me oh because of no huh well you don't actually must be imagining it but I kind of can hear it anyway never mind that anomaly in the DAW it's telling me it's left but I can somehow still hear it on the right a little bit could be my brain anyway fucking let's turn this back on where do I, I forgot where I turned it off so it happens here first then it happens there and what is happening on here bright room pretty wet 
and then it's going of course to the right everything and then it's going to another hub no adjustment of, uh, of decibels okay let's hear the whole thing now again a lovely width going on now it's improved width thanks to that I'd lucky I did that If, would I? It's so. Uh, would I want to reduce the effects? Um, no. Would I want to increase them? Okay, I like that. I like that. So that's the story with the, the stat. And all that shit goes on inside, inside of... <laughs> so I was like overwhelmed by the shit I was calling and shit. I'm walking around with my existentialist mill as fuck the decision. Going, what, what even is the point? What is the point? It has no point and it's even more evident now than it usually is. It's liquefied. The fucking potatoes are liquefied and in the bag, in the bag, man. They're making it. It's all mega. Having a party and all. And then a layer of sugar. That's the Roman Empire, man. That's humans. Pull it out, but nice thick slices. Just in one layer if you can. Once again, again, be a little careful. All right, now, some seasoning on it, quite a bit. There is the bacon, but I know that bacon's not terribly salty, so I'm putting quite a bit of salt in there. And some pepper. And all we need to do is top it with some pastry. Now, you can do another layer of eggs if you like, but what I find is they, they tend to stick to the pastry, don't they? Are we going to do it? What do you reckon? Should we try? Yeah, let's try it. There's room there. So let's just break them sort of in the centre, just like that. I think that's a good idea. And then let's just tuck this in. This in, this in, this in. Exactly this sheet of pastry. Don't press it down really hard because you'll break those eggs and we don't want to do that. Just press it in the edges and then a little bit of egg wash. And we're in business. Not quite like my mum used to make, but it's really nice. And the thing that I like about it, it's just as hot as it is cold. So you can do either way. You just push it reasonably generously without being sloppy. Fucking patch up. Where is it? Oh, oh yeah, instrument patcher, which is here. Sorry, that's it. So you can run patcher as well as an effect as unit as well, or you can run it as an instrument. It's up to you. And there's some really fantastic. Ah, oh, don't scratch your nose, Brad. Hands off nose. Let's move on. Uh, we got uh, the. Let, let's talk about now the bass line. Uh, uh, my uncle, right, he was a, a a millionaire, and he he'd go and he and he was from Queensland, Australia, and in between everything he'd he'd think when he thinks he would go, ah, and he'd go into a restaurant, right, he'd go, ah, coming into the restaurant, he'd go, ah, I'll go on this table, ah, and then he'd sit down, he go, ah, what will we order, ah, and then he's like fart right well the waiter's there he'd fart and he'd go and and then and then the waiter would go stand there and the waiter can has to pretend it didn't happen and he's like going and then he says something like get it into you and everyone's like but he was a he had a big personality don't know where i get that from okay fucking check it Papa. 
Anyway, let's pay attention to the clarity of the kick then. Yes, cl crystal clarity drums will be s something that you should get from the patchbay.co.uk. Otherwise, you're, you, you're either poor or dumb. Cool. Or, or so damn smart you shouldn't be watching this. So, um, or maybe it's not to do with smart. Maybe you're so damn, I should use the word advanced. Maybe. Uh, so, so Mitch Murder, what are you watching this for, man? Why are you watching this? All right. Okay, let's see. Uh, kick. The kick goes to my drum channel, which is over here. My drum channel. Let's talk firstly. Everything goes to my drum channel. As you see, it's all routed all to the drum channel, obviously. Because I like to give all my drums processing such as uh, such as uh, convolution reverb to put them in a similar 3D space. My hand is is losing blood to, to it. My hand. Got to put it down now and get the blood back. Come on, blood. Pump blood back to hand. Yep, capillary action. There we go. My little finger is going to die. It's going to, like, at the end of this tutorial, I'll have a yellow little finger and it will fall off. And then I'll have to, I wouldn't eat it. I'd probably call my girlfriend and we'd go to the hospital and sew it on. Anyway, so this goes, maybe I'd sew it on myself, but I, I don't have any. Oh, my nose is itchy. Ah! It's because I didn't shave. My nose is itchy. Ah! I can't scratch it because my head has got no arms. And I, it wrecks everything. I could fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck! Wrecking the whole head thing. God damn it. Kick. Let's check what it has. It has a base schmear. Base schmear. Let's have a look what that is. Well, it's a thing that I... That's very... It's, again, another attention to detail thing that... That, you know, you might not even hear the difference, but here we go. I can hear the difference. And after, and eventually, you will too. And, and that's the good thing. Uh, maybe we could smear it harder. Yeah, definite difference there. So... What are we talking about with the bass schmear? Well, I'm, I've got the dry signal there, and then I've got another signal path parallel. It's isolating this frequency, well, this, and it rolls off that way and that way, and it's processing only this frequency, which is up there, 37, 36, okay? That's a very area, it's an area in the low. And what it's doing is it's just increasing the low end presence of the kick by adding a short ambient reverb to it with a very dry um, situation like so. And what we get is um, just a, a sort of a, a, sh a schmear of the low end of the kick, which just sort of fattens it up, bring just widens out the frequencies down there schmear cool that's all i got on there by the way that kick has like a billion effects on it but it's already been processed and processed for eight hours kind of thing you can have all that in the palm of your hand with crystal clarity drums crystal clarity drums pack uh don't buy it then Whatever, don't buy it then, if you want. You can not buy it. That's fine. Go go and not buy it. And you can have kicks like... Other, anyway, what do we got here? Uh, it is uh, the snare. Let's have a look. It's got a patcher. Ooh, I love patchers. So you see here's patcher now used in a scenario of, 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 of effects chain here. So it's got a one... It's kind of silly, but... It's kind of not. So it's got a parallel situation going to here with this. And what's going on here? Well, we got a, a long reverb. So there's a little bit of gate, gated reverb action happening here. Only a little bit, though. So we got this long 
Uh, I think it's uh, this is a plate style um, reverb from Reflector, or and it is medium length with a bigger decay, and it's fifty percent wet. And then we've got a gate just gating it off. Let's have a listen to it without these effects. Sweet fuck all difference. But there is a difference. And it's differences like that which sort the men from the mice. And to be fair gender wise for the 5% of people who are women, sort the women from the possums. How's that, huh? Equality. Equality. Everything equal. Like one... Yeah, everyone is equal. Okay, so over here, everyone should be executed equally. Here we go. We got a uh, attack, sustain, gain. Barely fucking anything going on here, mind you. The dry goes there. The dry gets its its um, gated reverb treatment. Then even the dry and the gated reverb treated situation. I might actually increase that and decrease that. Goes into another one, and what happens here? It's uh, it's transient. Um, both is the, I wouldn't have done that. So only release, only re remove the sustain a bit there. In fact, I might even do that. Let's have a look. Nice. And then um, the pro filter, which also is is disabled in this situation. I thought I might use it. I might not have had it sitting there anyway. Pro filter we'll talk about later, but in this case I'm not using it, so you can fuck off, right? And this is also limited, by the way. And then it goes to the out. Then it goes to the next thing, which is the guitar rig in an effects slot. Let's have a look. Now we have again a bit more gated reverb action in a different way without using a gate. We're doing a ref uh, convolution reverb, and it's medium, and the decay's not heaps but the wet is more than 50%. Uh, then we're chopping it down the sustain, which is kind of like gating, but different, similar. And then once we have that, we're adding another fucking reverb. No joke, we are. And it's really short decay, uh, same decay, and, and no joke, we are. Okay, that's where I go. Okay, you might go, well, that's really, really weird. Yeah, it is. I'm weird. And then, um, then... We can talk about pro filter. So without pro filter, with out, with without, with pro filter is fucking awesome because what it does is it does uh well when it has the cutoff to the max, which is strange. It it sets yeah it sets the cutoff at ten um, kilohertz, right? Without it, normally the cutoff would be nowhere to be seen there would be no cutoff right but what it does it it does that when it sets the cutoff to 10 kilohertz it also sets the resonance to 0.4 which means that if visually you'll see the whole spectrum and it will have like basically it will be just rolling off at 10 kilohertz but not rolling off it will be doing a resonant roll off so that's what is occurring it's so it's going like this and it has a little lump there, and that just, it seems to really effectively increase the high end, um, it's like an exciter, but it's more of an EQ, and does the high end chisel, but you can go too far though, that's too far, right, you're getting a resonant squeal, Nice. So that's what happened there. I also need to draw your attention to um, all the way through the effects chains, you have options to reduce gain. And in, in the situation we're looking at here, we've reduced actually the gain by a significant amount. We've reduced it by 5.7 decibel. And now that I've actually increased the attack, it's even more necessary to do so. It's also good to always look at your... Um, output monitors whatever in and outs as we go in 
we're, we're all good. And as we go out, we're more than all good. We've got to be even more headroom there due to that situation. If we didn't do that, we boosted it there, we're not all good anymore. We're clipping. Now, that, that would be actually clipping too. So six point fucking six point cunt. Good. So uh, and then gate. Yeah, I know. I'm insane. I gate the whole thing again. And that without the gate. With the gate. See how it's tied it in a little bit more. So I always do small increments, a whole chain of small increments, you know what I mean? And um, that way I can get the level of complexity I, I want. Um, if I was just to only put a snare sample in there and put a reverb and then gate it, it would be too boring. And also it would be, it would be too boring to do for a start. It just would be like doing the dishes and there's only three dishes to do. And for and and it wouldn't be, um, wouldn't involve as much artistic um, license or creative license as I like. So that's why I always do heaps of little movements, so I can really sculpt things exactly the way I want. Not that's good enough. Let's move on. And then the transient processor here is increasing the attack again, which I forgot about. So I'm going to actually. No, I'm going to leave it. So uh, I did need to do that. And it's not doing anything to the release. And it's medium. It's not transparent. It's medium. And that's our, that's our snare. Okay. Hats. Wow. They're damn wide. How wide are they? I mean, if they weren't wide, what would they sound like? They'd sound like this. That's what most people's snare uh, hats sound like, generic and not wide. It's like, uh, maybe they're really advanced. They're going, yeah, okay, that's not advanced. Okay, I'll show you what's advanced, the widths that you just heard. See that? There's nothing, uh, nothing more satisfying than a lovely wide situation for your hats. To give your drums a good fucking um, presence. Okay, so how did that happen? Well, in this case, Patcher. You could do all this shit not in Patcher, but it would look ugly. Like you'd you'd have to basically. This would be your hats coming in. You'd have to send it off to a couple of more of these channels and these channels would have to have these things in it and i don't know patch enables a lot more what what's but what i'm telling you here is like a lot of daws will have a similar node based thing if they don't fuck them in the fucking ass okay they suck dick okay not that there's anything for those guys who are watching not that anything wrong with sucking dick. See, that's how open-minded I am. You know what I mean? I'm very fucking open-minded. It's okay to suck a dick. Go and suck a dick. Enjoy the dick. You know what I mean? Lick it, cunt. Suck a dick. Go for it. You know, good on you, mate. You know, suck a half dick, half cunt. Like I said, go and lick an animal's dick. You, no, but don't shake my hand afterwards, please. Please don't. So, uh, you got um this happening. So, what's happening here? Let's have a look. Let's make this bigger. Got this. What's this doing? Ah, uh, this is no longer doing anything. I used to have it doing something really zany. So what? What? I'll just explain this anyway. See how it's fucking it up a bit. It's screwing around with the stereo spread, but it's actually not doing it properly because it's creating anomalies, and that's why I decided to take it out. But what this is is a, a peak controller what it can do is it can be fed an audio signal and it can respond to that audio signal and create um, a, an automation line that you can add to any knob in this case i've used the lfo function where it does this um, and then you can add that to any knob so in this case it would be doing this to the 
delay, which creates anomalies. I don't recommend doing this right now on this version of FL Studio. It fails. So uh, it's also doing that. Cool. Um, the, the cool thing about it is, though, it, it can automate knobs, but don't automate this knob. You're going to have problems. So that's why I decided to uh, just fucking fuck that off. Oops. Fuck that off. All right. Really, it should just fuck off now. Fuck off. Fuck yourself. We don't want you. And that should be there, yes. That should be maybe there. Let's have a look. Nice. Okay, so what's happening here? We're getting dry, going bang, right through to here. We're getting a decrease of 10 decibel. This should be actually zero. Then it's going over to here. If that's another hub. Increasing 2.2 de 2 .2 decibel. This was here for testing reasons. Um, to test the difference between... If I add something to the chain, I want to know what it sounds like. Um, see how it does that? Fuck that. Ah, nose itch. Anyway, not every day my nose is itchy. It's just when I eat sugar. So you have like... Um, uh, if if I I haven't really found the the I uh, you probably do this to bypass everything, which is a four click situation. All right. Um, rather than doing that, I just have this dry situation here, and just that uh, that bypasses it. Turn that on and turn that off, and now it's using it again. So. So what are we doing here? We're doing crazy bullshit that is even unnecessary, I'll admit. Okay? It is unnecessary. You don't need to do something this complex to get to that. Uh, sometimes I might have been stoned when I did this. And it's not a good idea sometimes to do things when you're stoned. Yeah, I might have been stoned when I did this. I don't smoke weed anymore though. I had a little relapse. So I isolated the left. I basically put it to the left, isolated the right, but see this delay and put it to the right. That's all fucking BS. Okay, I'll tell you why. Hang on. Doesn't need any of that shit. I'm going to delete it. Look, you can't delete them all at once. Come on, FL Studio. Come on, image line. You can do better than that. All right. So really, you don't need these you get the same effect from this if you just had simply doing that and and then you wouldn't even need patcher either right but it's there so whatever let's see it sounds same it sounds exactly the same okay so i was stone there's a visitor wants to come in and learn about synthwave sorry we don't do birds hello excuse me we don't, we don't do birds. Hello? Just, we don't, we don't do birds. Anyway, so you go here and I've decided to get rid of any low end crap um, to do with the hi-hat here and even chop it off a little bit up there too. With and without that. I like it better with that, of course. Okay. It's cleaner. It's cleaner than what it was before. So if we uh, have a look, it's still achieving that width, but it's cleaner. Okay. If I have a look now, why did I put the imager? Well, without the imager, oh, it doesn't show me. But what the image is doing is I... I just for like OCD neatness reasons. By the way, this is well on the borderline of um, stereo phase issues, right? You know, so uh, which I want it to be. And I, I just, because I just don't like seeing a red line happening. I don't want to know. I know this could be past the, the limit of um, what's acceptable, the correlation that's acceptable. 
um, and then in conjunction with all the other parts, um, the overall signal would still be in stereo phase, but this individual component wouldn't, and that bothers me. So what I do, obviously there's nothing down here, so I make sure that whatever that happens to be down here on a minute skerrix of information is completely mono. Anything here, anything basically red represents that, Brown represents that. Anything basically up to 2K is completely mono, right? And there is a little bit of shit, definitely in the second band, and there is a tiny little skerrick of shit in the first band, which is definitely all mono, right? Then when it comes to this green band, that's where the majority of the, the hat is occurring, though not the fundamental, um, and... I've actually reduced the width there to keep it the correlation where I want it to be. So if I look at the correlation without that, it's in the red. That bothers me, and it doesn't look very good here. I don't like that. So reduce a little like that, and I feel better about that. Now, the, you can have much sharper stereo se separation situations, but this is very vague. So that, as you can see, the left channel spreads. It, it it sits there on the left, but it also spreads like so. And the right is more pronounced, and it's almost on the right like so. But what we're seeing is um, it's in two places on the vector scope at one time, but it isn't really. Uh, the, the vector scope has a, a refresh delay that allows to see um, both at once. When you're getting widths like this, you want to be seeing something going there and something going there at the same time, even though they're not really. It's going, psh, psh. it's going, psh, psh. Psh, psh. real, really quicker than you know, like a couple of milliseconds. I'll tell you how many milliseconds. There is 3.4 milliseconds delay between left and right. And what you're seeing here is that. And that's why you're getting that fucking awesome width. You should be doing that with your hi-hats if you want to get that. No, you don't always have to do it with your hi-hats, but if you want to get that. That is a cool technique. There's shitloads of ways of approaching that technique with shitloads of variations of the result. But normal, normal people's hi-hats sound like this. Legends hi-hats sound like that. So it's up to you. Let's have a look at our next drum, which is another hi-hat, which isn't having that done. So that's, this is just another hi-hat, uh, which is not working yet. There we go. So we got a bit of a compressor. Just makes it a bit more solid. Then we got the uh, convolution reverb, very important, might even give it a little less decay, nice. And then this, this is jump, this is actually, so that this is this hat, where is it, that, and that's going to 5 for some reason, because I used that up the other kind of processing. So this is wrong, like it's irrelevant now. But it's going to five and then it's jumping over to four where it gets that done. It really could just go to four. Go to four. No, it couldn't actually. Well, it could. And then it would just have to have... Um, this is a bit more gyro. And then it would have to have, hang on, on four. Ah, uh, components, dynamics, volume. There, it's the same thing, now it's not fucking around and wasting a channel, it's, it's irrelevant now, this channel. Let's change your color to 
the color of um, fuck off, a fuck off color. There you go. So that's your hat. That's very basic, barely any processing going on there. Mind you, though, check out the hat. It's really uh, tight with with this um, curvy um, decay on it and no release. Can we tighten it even more? Yeah. I dig, I dig how you got this exponential option here, or tension as they call it. Tension is really cool. I love always tension. I'm always having tension. Maybe not that much tension. That's your hat. And they all go to drum channel. What happens in the drum channel? Well, what happens in the drum channel is you conform. I'll turn all that shit off. You conform all the drums to be part of one family of drums. I mean, you, you, you generally, when you have a performance, you don't have the fucking guy playing a hi-hat by himself in the corner, just tapping on a hi-hat. And then over there, you've got a guy hitting a snare and another guy, a, a woman, uh, sorry, a transgender person hitting um, all the other drums there, right? Um, what you got, and um, you you got all one thing. You've you, you've got just this one man in a wheelchair who's doing the drumming. So let's have a look without the wheelchair man. See, it sounds like basically it sounds like there's all separate people doing separate drums now without that processing. It's also not fat because it doesn't have a compressor, and it's also not. Uh, maximize with the barricade. I love tone boosters. So once we have the wheelchair drummer, we have all the drums occurring in one place. Now it sounds like there's a guy sitting there in his wheelchair at a drum thing, and he's as good. He's very good at drumming, and but he's sitting in one place. He's not sitting all across the whole stage. Cool. So what do we got going on? How does that happen? Well, yep, I wanted to sharpen the attack again on the overall situation and on the sustain. I wanted to release again another little tightening. And then, yes, the another reflector of convolution reverb, and that's to put it all in. This, this puts it all in a similar uh, space. See, now it's all over the joint. Now it's kind of in the same place. And it has a, a very satisfying reverb added to it. And then the next thing we do is uh, smooth rider. I actually think I might have used a, not a preset, but a, this is a characteristic. It's pretty cool. It's got characteristic. Tone boost is awesome, right? Um, so without going into too much into compression, which is for another video, I've got a bit of a, uh, a bit of a compression situation that sort of fattens and tightens. It's in the only thing I'd kind of want is a um, maybe a soft knee, um, but this doesn't have it. But it's still awesome. Cool. So that's the drums. Let's move on to the bass, and then we're done. Then you can go home and you don't do your homework. That's the key thing to tell your kids. Kids, don't do your homework and wag school as often as possible because force-fed education is a pile of crap. That's not how learning works. Cool. Like, I, I you know, all the money I've made as an adult has been from self-taught stuff. It's not from anything I learned at school. School was, let me just think about the amount of hours I had to go to school. But mind you, a private school. Mind you, a stupidly expensive private school. I was made to feel really guilty if I didn't do well for $15,000 a year. And then I got force-fed all this fucking shit, all this moral shit from all these idiots, right, who are full of shit, who don't know what the fuck's going on. That's why I talk like this, because I had people telling me to pull my socks up and to walk around with decorum and and sing hymns about God with with great accord. I mean, 
I, I used to have to sing in Latin for fuck's sake. I used to have to sing. Caria mo sigitur, yo anes dum so mo. Had to stand there in a blazer with a sh certain shirt and tie. And they said, they went, pressure, pressure, pressure. If you don't do your marks aren't good, you'll be nothing. You'll be nothing. Am I nothing? I'm not fucking nothing. I'm a fucking legend. Never didn't need one bit of your fucking private school. Just for your fucking image. I say this to my parents. Just You just put me in a private school for your fucking self-image. Just to go with your Mercedes. And your fucking... Oh, let's put him in rowing. So he has to... Uh, so he can stand by the river and go... Go Hillebrew! Go Hillebrew! While you're holding some champagne. So it's just a fucking... I was just going to that school as part of a fashion statement of my parents. Or my mum in particular. Fuck's sake. Not one cent of I earned from anything I learned from there. Luckily, I didn't do my homework and I did music. All right, check this out. Bass. So over there, I mean, just due to sloppiness, um, my bass channel sits here. And um, in my bass involves a layer situation. Layer, if I show the children of my layer, show children. These are the children noises. You got, you know, bass. You got a serum bass, which is an FM bass I made for serum, and then you got a bit of a DX bass uh, essence, so which is a patcher, and the FM bass itself is not a patcher, it's a serum by itself, and the Uno bass is just Uno. So let's just start. Let's just start with the um, the serum bass. I must say, serum is fucking awesome. Serum is the shit. Serum is the shit. Go and buy serum. Okay. What do we got? We got. Let's start off. Let's just start off with oscillator A, which is something I drew myself. Oscillator B was part of um, this uh, this pack from um, Adventure Kit Wave Tables. He's a fucking legend who just got all these weird wave tables from everywhere, and he's just some kind of psycho autistic cunt like I am, but hats off to you, adventure kid. Kid, Cool. Let's check uh, oscillator A. What is it? It's already sounding um, FM-ish, and the reason is because this is receiving modulation from the noise oscillator. So let's have a listen to the noise oscillator. Oh, sorry. All this other crap's on. My bad. Goodbye, crap. Goodbye, everyone. Only you. Good. Here we go. Noise oscillator. Oh. Fuck's sake. Okay. Why is this not happening? Technical difficulties. Okay, gotta work out what happened here. There you go. N nobody's perfect. Ah, yes, that's what's happened. Layer, How, because layer invokes that. Sorry. Pfft. All right. So noise, it's just tapping, right? And that that comes through at a very low level into the the overall mix. So we're getting a tap, but then also. It's modulating oscillator A. So the start of oscillator A has a bit more grit because it's oscillate because it's modulated by this um, piece of noise. And this is sort of your typical kind of guitar um, kind of wave shape that you'd if you strummed a guitar you'd find things like this. And it really is. Uh, an octave higher than it could be because it's sort of doing two cycles here it's going up, down, up, down effectively right uh, so yeah and then together that goes with this oscillator over here which is doing three cycles one, two, three 
uh, and that's also similar sort of guitar-y thing, but a higher. It's pitched down by one octave. It's actually not even because it's so subtle. It's not even in tune, but the the that that's okay. Um, now now this uh, now you see it's FM from A, so this is going to get FM from A, and then it's going to sound different, more A dominant. Right, and then bring make sure A is FM uh, modulated from the noise. There's the little the hammer hammer tone at the start, the click. I made this preset. I got all these sort of presets available in Serum Wave series. You can check them out. And these are you can just automate stuff by dragging and like that over to the knob, which is kick ass. So something's um, automating the cutoff here. I, I when I click through, I'll find out what. It's this. I've made uh, this LFO into an envelope by clicking here. Um, and then it can be a very complex envelope, which is awesome. It shows what's happening there. So that's um, basically the top of the envelope is there. I mean there, out of the way. And the, wherever it ends up at is the bottom of the envelope. And the same goes for this top and bottom. You can see it occurring in real time. So this is tweaking the amount of FM from the noise on a, on a trigger basis. And then it's also at the same time uh, on a trigger basis um, manipulating the filter, which is a low filter with a, a dB um, of 24. Cool. And then we got an FX section. I have to say, the compressor from the Serum FX section is utterly awesome. Check if everything's still recording. Hello. Okay, we're still good. So what do we got? We got our, uh, let's have a look without the EQ and without the compressor. So it's a bit too tinny, so I decided that I wanted to pull back the um, the dynamics for the high end, like like this, as you can see. See, if it was higher, it's way too tinny. I think I'm going to leave it about there. So it's a multi-band mode. You've got three bands to deal with, and all of this is applied to each band, your threshold ratio. The ratio is 2.1, the attack's 90, the release is 90, the gain is slightly, it's 3 dB up, and the threshold is where I think it should be. By ear. Any higher would be too much. And it's fully wet, so you can do parallel, of course. And then I just boosted the high again a little bit. And that's why I did this too high anyway. Anyway, there's your sweet spot. And that's what's going on in the serum component of the bass. Notice that it's slightly enhanced there and there. It also <laughs> drastically altered there and there. Um, I'll go, I won't explain why I need to do that. It was just by ear. I just by ear decided it needed to be that way. Without, it just doesn't pop out. It needs to pop out in these places. Right, so cool, and notice that it sends off to a uh, left and right here. So now we can talk about um, splitting the chain uh, in the normal way. So it goes off to the left, sends it to the left, and on there on the left, it's given, uh, and it's completely left, right, pan to the left. It's given a bump on its um, fundamental for left only right 
and then on the right it's removed the hole from fundamental on the right and this is only additive to the original bass and that's panned bright so it's just given it a bit more three it's given it a bit more um, stereo dimension that I find sounds just right without it, it sounds like this without it it's too it's not wide enough it's not interesting enough that just sort of brings it out more and I'm kind of happy with that I might tweak it a bit more in the future but for, for now I'll leave it at that by the way that is only the FM bass from Serum now I got it something else I got Essence that I call DX Essence, which is Dext. It's um, it's uh, an adapted um, preset from Dext. Uh, sometimes I make presets with Dext, but a lot of the time I adapt them because I've got that library of actual DX7 um, DX7 patches, and I'm really excited about the fact that they were made in the 80s, and just when I upload them to my DX7 later after a bit of tweaking here. Um, then I do further tweaking in my DX7 as well. Um, and it's just, it's partly about getting the sound I want. It's also partly about doing the level of nerdiness I want. So yeah, it's like, so you might ask some people, why do they use hardware when software can do it all? Well, the part of the reason might be also because they just like nerding out with the hardware, you know? They just like touching the shit. I do too. I love my DX7. And I do believe that it's going to give um, a very, very small uh, level of uh, edge to my music. And that's my belief. And I like to satisfy my belief. And it's a very small amount. Yes, it might be 0.2 of a percent. I don't give a fuck. I enjoy it. So you got got... Um, doing your normal noise thing that I do just to get rid of that little crunchy bit or well, not get rid of it but tone it down that goes over to here it's doing a tighten up with transient it's doing again uh, a convolution reverb but at the same time it's doing a dry which is heading off to the left and in, it's uh, decreasing by three decibels the dry and then it hits my other favorite, the drop, the drop, drop, drop. I'll do a whole thing on the drop later because it is utterly fucking awesome. This is my second favorite um, FX plugin, the drop. It's fantastic. Uh, just it has all these uh, circuit models, Jupiter, Wasp, MS1, MS2 Korg, Prodigy fucking legendary man um and you know the, you put the drive up you got four pole it's a pass filter basically it has the ability to do really cool lfo stuff really excellent um envelope automation based on midi inputs um based on also uh signal following uh fucking excellent it's really awesome. It's got FM capabilities. Wow. Just fucking love this. Fucking love this fucking thing. Even if you put it on stuff and you don't even do any passing at all, let's say. Where's that at? 420. You do no passing. It's still adding the color of the circuitry. You know what I'm saying? 420. Huh. 420, bro. Schmoko, Schmoko time 420. Rip some fucking cones, bro. Right, no, I don't do that anymore. Cause it made me dumb. It made me clumsy. Okay, here we go. Uh, and it was a rel relapse because I decided to be drug free because I took too many drugs in my life. So, yeah, and then it's out. See you later. That's, uh, that's just that. Uh, and then uh, equalizer. Um, this is the, the essence. On the essence, I decided to have like 
um, just cut it off here, like with a brick wall. Which, of course, can you probably, if you want to be, and what it is, you're hearing is just that some sort of DX essence, basically, that I wanted. That runs across the whole thing. Without it, so you haven't really got anything useful there. I decided to do that. When you do a brick wall, it can create anomalies here, like weird comey problems, sort of weird shit. So be very careful when doing it. Um, maybe you might want to do really tight um, like that, just to be more sensitive to the, the frequencies. But in this case, I'm not. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to just fucking chop it, right? So that's what's going on with my essence. And then the essence, the essence is just going straight to my, there, by the way, also the essence has this too. So whatever, whatever works. I do certain things because it sounds good by ear. I can't explain exactly right now why it sounds good to even increase the, at 240, the, um, you know, and completely do this again. It doubles up here. So I've got a brick wall and I've got this. So it is even less bullshit going on down there. That's important to know that you might brick wall or you might low pass and you think that you've actually got rid of all the information, but you haven't. You haven't. You can do twice the low pass and you get rid of even more. I'm not joking. I'll show that in another video. And now uh, we got one more component, which was to tell, you know, base, which needs a layer on. There you go. That just gives you the fatness that you need. Right? I've done some stereo enhancements. Uh, and I've actually made it mono. See, that's fucking as mono as I can go with this. This actually doesn't do full mono for some reason. I wish it did. Stereo enhancer, right? See that? That's way too wide. That's supposedly mono, but it doesn't look like it. Ah, oh, that's why. So I panned it to the right. Okay. I can not do, it, do that there. And you can see that it's mono. Do it here. What's the difference? Anyway, so that has no processing except that it only keeps the, the low end part for the fatness. The high end, don't necessarily care about because I've already got that whole FM twang that I've created with my serum and the uh, FM bass essence. So back to enable all the bass. Okay, so um, pretty cool FM bass. Um, and on my bass channel, I got an imager just to check the overall image. It's favoring the right a bit there. It's also um, clipping, that's a problem. But, but I'm not really, I haven't really um, fixed all those problems yet because I'm still halfway through this. Um, but you learned a lot, have you not? And then I've got it even tightening it up a bit more with another processor on there, transient. I'm nowhere near finished on these. Let's now let's quickly um, talk about. Uh, and I also forgot to mention, I added a little blip of noise independently on channel two twenty two to accompany the snare. And when it works, I'll, I'll, I'll work it out when it works. Needs the drums enabled. Hang on. It goes through the drums. Okay. Okay. I need technical difficulty music to be done. Why isn't that happening? Hmm? Um... Because snare layer wasn't on. I always get fucking. Always forget that. Okay, so there you go. That actually goes on my snare as well, and that's just adding a little 
onto my attack as well, um, which is also shaped with a bit of um, left-right delay difference there. And so let's hear the snare with and without that. Enable the snare, snare. That's the snare with it. That's the snare without it. Just adds that little bit more solidarity on the attack. It's a little bit more. We'll, we can even enhance that. Not too much. I like it. Now I'll play the whole song again for a sec. Of the whole pattern. I'm not sure about that sequence whether I'm actually going to have it in the in the tune or not. It's kind of okay. I'm not sure, maybe not. Notice on my master channel, because I find this problem with um, with Fruity Loops, that when I click here, that's how I'm playing it. It shows me the level of the channel I'm currently working on, and then I can't see the master anymore. Because anything you click on becomes the, sh displayed on the master. May hey Shane Yates, maybe you can tell me something about this. All right. So I always have on my master at the bottom. I have a fruity DB meter, which I have sitting here, so it can stay there the whole time. So when I'm looking on this channel, I can I can see this channel's um, level, and then. This master scene adopts the channel for some reason. It shouldn't. Okay, this is master. Okay, image line. This is master, mate. It doesn't say here monitor. It says here master. So it should always be showing master channels level here. I disagree, right? Oh, it is. But it's still too small, and I can't see ODB. Where's ODB on this? There? There? I don't know. Just don't know. It's just confusing. That's something that confuses me. So anyway, I have this here all the time, so I can always see where I'm at, no matter where I'm at. Anyway. That was on the mixing side of things. Now, I'll very, very quickly talk on the compositional side of things. I don't want that sequence anymore. I've decided that sequence can fuck off. I don't like it. Fuck that. All right. This is, uh, let's have a look at uh, the bass layer. All right. Um, what do we got? We got, uh, it's important that your bass line isn't too hyperactive, jumping all over the fucking place. If your bass line has too much to say, you're going to find it really hard to weave anything into it. And you're basically going to... Ha That's how come you hit a brick wall with songs mostly is the answer to that reason you hit a brick wall with songs mostly is that your bass line is too hyperactive and you can't really find something to fit around it because it's taking up too much attention um, compositionally. Notice that this is primarily doing this note, mostly this note, and then if it's not only if it's not doing this note, it's doing an octave up note, so same note, right? And then occasionally it quickly, while you're not looking, goes but you get it and does other stuff, right? But not so much so that it's impossible to weave anything over the top of it. And when it gets to the end, it does something different. It sort of does a different bit of a key change I reckon here. So if I do this full
there. Okay, that's the baseline. Ding, 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 ding. Do get it, do it. Right? Um, let's have a look over here. Here's our that stab, which is on pattern one. Parking somewhere. Confuse myself here. It's pattern one. Pattern two. Notice an uh, interesting thing about uh, my stab is that um, it's got two participants. It's got my primary stab and then it's got a clone of that which has different um, stuff to it. And what we're seeing is short. So what is that other bit? If I turn off the primary one, primary, primary one. Not very loud, it could be louder. So that's going, that's actually different chord. See that? It's a different chord for that bit. Like so. So together, I actually turned it up. That was a good move. Pretty sure. Huh? Yeah. And of course, we have our pitch pen. And that's how I draw my pitch pens. When I do pitch pens, I usually. In, in, I usually uh, have, in this case I do, I, I usually have it not starting the bending action for quite some time, which I didn't do here for some reason. So I would actually keep it sort of like, because you've got to establish what note you're doing first before you start bending it, right? So the attack of the note is correct, and then it bends. And it, as it goes further in the bend gets more and more extreme and then reverts to to middle again so so that's how I do bends I start off with nothing and then like that. that's what I do I mean that kind of bend you can also do the down bend like just do and all, all the other kind do it uh, you can do i would actually probably add some bends to the bass line as well um wherever that is there uh i might where where the bass line leads to another note like let's see like here or here you could do i'm not going to do one you could do uh, do, do, do. This could be just one note, and it could be going do 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 do. You see what I'm saying? Uh, anyway, that, never mind that. Always important, even though uh, this currently hasn't got any velocity really set. So I don't know how these velocities are working. If I have a look now. Um, just as a final thing, we're almost done here. The matrix, there's no velocity set up, so there isn't any velocity. But the other instruments do have velocity, so that's what this layer is sending that velocity to some of the other instruments, um, but not Serum because it doesn't have velocity set up. If you want to set up velocity with Serum, I think you would have to do. Velo, then you'd have to do it's a bit of a head fuck amp, and you have to do that. I oh, know that, and then you negative it. Oh, sorry, that has to be velo. That's velo, that's nothing. It's not, then you do that. Then you got velo. <laughs> Anyway, fuck, it doesn't, I don't want velocity on it anyway. 
Not a bitch. Not a bitch. Okay. So, thanks for uh, watching my tutorial. I hope you've learned um, a, a bit about Arcade Summer and how Arcade Summer operates. Um, this is uh, the beginning of how Arcade Summer operates. It gets a lot more fucked up than this. It gets a lot more in depth than this. A shitload, a fucking shitload more in depth than this. It's uh, this is the tip of the fucking iceberg. This this is just beginner's stuff, right? Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. I really appreciate those people who support me, even at times when I'm standing up for free speech and at times when I'm being myself. And uh, I'm happy to see that it was like about 99% of people were in, in agreement with me and in support of me as a person and agreed with me. And um, those people, I would say, are proper thinkers. Those people are the people I want to teach. Those people are the people I want to talk to. I don't want to put, talk to people with, you know, who who are just so far up shit creek with their political correctness. I don't want anything to do with those fucking cunts. Okay, so just again, if anything in this video has upset you, get the fuck out of my channel, get the fuck out of my group, go and watch Play School, you soft cock. Thanks for watching.